one of the deacons. <laughs> Deacon Christian. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks, Sister Roxy, and, and those that participated here in our morning devotion. That's one thing about Sister Roxy. You can, you can depend on her, and it's going to be spirit-filled. And, and, and I love the fact that she speaks from the heart, and she doesn't mind letting us know uh, that she loves the Lord, and uh, she shows it. So it's good to have you all here with us this morning. Uh, we ask that you all would stand at this time while we go to the throne of grace here as we start our morning worship. Dear Heavenly Father, we approach your throne again with a thankful heart and a thankful mind, dear Lord, that you've blessed us to assemble and gather together once more in your name, dear Lord. And Father, we thank you for this day now, and thank you, dear Lord, for the blessings, dear Lord, that you have bestowed upon us, and the blessing yet to come, dear Lord. And we pray right now that you would be with us as we move forward in our morning worship, praying, Father, you bless the man of God that's going to preach your word today, dear Lord. Watch over him and be with him and take care of him, dear Lord. Bless this congregation now, dear Lord. Bless our pastor today, dear Lord. And we pray, dear Lord, that you will look down upon him, touch his body, and be with him in a special way, dear Lord. And, Father, as we move forward in this worship service today, we pray, Father, that everything we say, everything we do, will be done in decent and in order, and pleasing and in your sight. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning again. Good to see you all. And as uh, we know Brother Romel's got a song he's ready to kick off for us here this morning. Uh, as we get started here. Oh, yeah, he's ready.
we come with our, our morning announcements, and then we'll have welcome by our hospitality. Amen. Say good morning to everyone. Good morning. Thank God for another blessed day. In the absence of our pastor, we pray that he's doing better, and we know God's got it. And we would like to thank um, Minister Larry White for being here with us today and his beautiful wife for being with us today again. Nice having you back. To whom it does concern, I would like to thank you all for what you have done for my family. In close, you will find a check in the amount of $500, $250 for the next five years, covering payments through 2028 for the annual fee, and $250, a donation towards anyone who cannot pay their fees. Again, thank you, Condosa Harris. And it's a $500 check for the Mount Nebo Baptist Church Cemetery. Little Zion Baptist Church in Greenville, today, they will be having the 145th anniversary for Family and Friends Day. The guest preacher and it's an anniversary service too, will be Reverend Dr. Henry Duran Jr., pastor of Star Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church in Triangle, Virginia. Lunch serve at 2 p.m. after the morning service. No, the service starts at 2 p.m. Lunch serve after the morning service where Reverend M James McCray Jr. is the pastor. <laughs> Bill of Baptist Church Markham will be having their annual United Ministry Day service on Sunday, October the 20th at 3 p.m. It's hosted by the Women's Ministry at Beulah. Mm -hmm. Our guest preacher for this occasion will be Pastor Tess Curtis Powell of Macedonia Baptist Church in Flint Hill. We are asking all women to wear red. <coughs> for uh, yours in Christ, Dick and Dale Turner, chairman of the Dick and Boys. Lunch serve after the morning service. Little Zion Baptist Church in Bethel, on Sunday, October the 13th, they will celebrate their 148th church anniversary at 3 p.m. Lunch served after the morning service. The guest preachers, Reverend Leroy Stewart and the members of the Salem Baptist Church in Marshall, Virginia, will be the guest preacher. Yours in Christ, Dr. Samuel Smith Sr. is the pastor. Just a reminder that Tuesday, October the 8th, is our revival service. Starts at 7.30. The guest preacher is Pastor Tyrone Green from Parts Delight Baptist Church in Catlett. We'll be here to celebrate our 149th church anniversary and Pastor Smith's 24th anniversary. Saturday, October the 12th, missionary meeting online at 10. Saturday, October the 19th, mortgage burning service at 2 p.m. here. Sunday, October the 20th, Minister Michael Ferguson will be our guest preacher for the morning service for the anniversary of 149 years and Pastor Smith's 24th anniversary. On Sunday, October the 20th, Pastor Smith will be preaching at the Beulah Baptist Church in Pilgrim Rest at 3 p.m. Thursday, October 31st, Pastor Smith will be preaching at Mount Olive Baptist Church in Rectortown for that revival service starting at 7.30. Continue to keep our sick, our shut-in, and our bereavement families in prayer. We know there have been many. We know we funeralized one of our members, our sister Patricia Haley, on last Thursday. So keep uh, the Haley family and the Hatchet family in prayer. Also, there's a home going of Brother Ell Ellery Moore, Jr. He's the husband to Sister Tia Moore. The service will be here on Saturday, October the 12th. Visitation 9 to 10. Service starts at 10, and there will be a repast to follow. So may you all have a blessed day and a blessed week. 
and just remember and put God first in your life, whatever you do or wherever you go. And also, just to remind everyone, um, the Thanksgiving sign-up sheet will be here on the podium. If you know someone that is in need, please sign the name up. We have until November the 3rd before we'll take the list away. So please sign up anyone you know that may be in need for Thanksgiving. And we love you all. a beautiful day out there for it to be fall and October. I'm yeah. glad it's still, we, we're holding on to a little bit of the sunshine. <laughs> it's so good to see so many smiling faces this morning. Um, welcome to the House of Prayer. Um, I pray that you had a blessed week. Does anyone have anything that you'd like to say or a song on your heart or scripture? Okay, we'll go right into it. <laughs> This is our first Sunday, so I'm going to ask if anyone who has a birthday for the month of October, could you please stand? <laughs> okay. No, nobody in here has a birthday in the month of October, but you know what? Somebody got a birthday in the month of October. So we're going to read to them. A special birthday prayer for quiet joys and peace of mind, for all that's gentle, all that's kind for love and hope to light your way, a little laughter every day, and for the chance to thank God, too, for the gift of knowing you. Enjoy your day. Happy birthday. Amen. Uh, does anyone have an anniversary for the month of October? If so, please stand. Okay, I'm already standing. <laughs> On, I'll read to myself. <laughs> On your anniversary, may the light of God's love brighten your day as you brighten the lives of those who love you, wishing you a blessed anniversary. God has poured out his love into our hearts, Romans 5, 5. I pray that you all have a blessed day, a blessed week, and hope to see you on Tuesday night. Amen. Thank Sister Johnson for those announcements and Sister Stetson for that welcome. I heard uh, one of the reverends said a while ago, he said, well, October must have been a bad month when nobody had a birthday in here. But uh, like you said, somebody had a birthday in October. <laughs> so we certainly thank God for them. And uh, we certainly thank God again for having you here with us today. And, and uh, we're here to praise the Lord. And we're here to worship him in truth and in spirit. Um, our reminder of our uh, tithes and orphan basket that's in the rear of the church. So uh, please uh, give as God has given unto you because we know that the Lord loves a cheerful yeah. giver. Yes, he does. So, Romero, you got another song? Huh? We're going to sing happy birthday. Oh, I forgot about that. Thank you, Sister Rocky. Happy birthday, October, wherever you are. <laughs> Deacon Anderson's going to sing with us, too. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. But, but we'll all sing together. How's that? Amen. What's that, Sister? All the, All the gods unchanging hands. Amen. There we go. Hallelujah. 
filled with swift transition. unchanging hand. Amen. It's praying time, and uh, we're going to ask uh, Chairman if he would come forward at this time uh, for our altar prayer. So the name of a loved one or a friend, somebody that you'd like to call out, you may be able to do so at this time. of grace and we're going to pray to our Father because we are limited but he isn't amen it's good when you know who you can go to for the source amen so if you have your names uh, we'll do it every Sunday amen a lot of sickness a lot of bereaved family God is still good. So when we leave here, we know Jesus ain't saved. You have a home to go to. Amen? So 
and leave here. It's not, it's not over. Amen? Just on this side is where we prepare ourselves. Amen? So in the names, pray for our pastor. Pray for our nation. Amen. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Our Father and our God, one who sits high and looks low, one who made us and know all about us. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that we know who to, 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 to come to, Father. That's you, Lord. All the names that were just called, Father God. Lord, you know all about them, Father God. And as I come right now, Father God, I ask you, Lord, that you will heal in your own time, Father God. You will do things your way, Father God. We're coming on behalf of all, of all the names, Father God, that I just said. But Lord, you got it, Father God. Grant to your Father God and leave in your hands, Father God. Dear God, we, we come, Lord, thank you for thank you. another Lord's Day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The day, Lord, you have made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we are, Father God. Why? Because we're here, Father God, celebrating you, Lord. Thank you for being God all by yourself, Father God. We pray, Lord, for our, our nation, Father God. We pray for our leaders, Father God. But through it all, Lord, you are in control, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you are in control and not man, Father God. Thank you for all that have transpired. Thus far, Father God. Then like, we pray, Lord, for Minister White will come this morning, Father God. Yes, and bring us the word, Father God. May you stand behind your sacred desk this morning, Father God. Tell us how good you is, Father God. Because without you, Lord, again, we can't do a thing, Father God. Bless our churches and our neighborhood, Father God. Bless all who don't pray for church that don't have a pastor right now, Father God. You know all about it, Father God. The things are going to be done in your time, Father God. But we're praying, Lord, that we know that you're in control, Father God. It's going to be all right, Father God. Lord, we thank you for this time. Continue, Lord, to bless Romeo. Bless us all from the choir to the usher door, Father God. Bless each one that's here, Lord, one by one. And those, Lord, keep saying that haven't quite realized how good you are to us, Father God. They will come in, Lord, realize that, <laughs> Lord, time has narrowed down, Father God. No time to play in church, Father God. And we know that you, you are a faithful, you are your own time, and you are a patient God. But again, Lord, time and down, down, Father God. They come in, Lord, before it's too late. Be like in old days, Lord. For 20, 20 years, no rain. God told to build an ark. People kept running, going around with what they were doing. 
And when the rain came, Lord, and the ark was finished. God shut the doors up. But no one else could hear. So I'm saying, Lord, it's no time to play. Let's get in now, Lord, before the doors are closed, public God. Give us time. It was by war at that time. This time going to be by fire, Father God. Let's get right now, Father God. Let's get right now. We thank you and we love you. All these things I say. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank the chairman for that prayer. Because we know that when we call upon the name of, of the Lord, that he hears our prayer. And he does answer in his own time and in his own way. Um, preaching time. Uh, we're delighted to have Reverend White and Sister White with us again. You know, we're here with this fourth Sunday. So, you know, they're, they're part of us now. So, <laughs> so good to uh, have them here with us. After this next election, he gonna sing something. He gonna sing something. All right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, we're gonna have Reverend White. He's gonna give us a song. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Bless you. Come on. Man. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on a higher high ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven, heaven's table land. No higher plane that I have found. My prayer. My aim is to make it to higher, higher ground. Let's do that one more time. Lord, lift me up and, and let me stand. When you've been walking this journey for a while, you say, by faith, on heaven's, heaven's ahead. Heaven's, heaven's table land. I've tried everything else. No, no higher plane. Drugs didn't do it. Alcohol didn't do it. Women didn't do it. That I have found. Lord, my prayer, my aim. I just want to make it, Lord. To a higher I'm just so glad this morning that the Lord found me. A lot of times, you know, when we look at our Methodist brothers and sisters, and without going into the, the doctrine of theology or the didactic teaching, there are certain aspects of our faith that believe that there's some good in us, that we assist God. Brothers and sisters, if a man tell the truth, the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? That scripture in Hebrew really means a man don't know his own heart. So when I'm counseling people and I'm dealing with them from the perspective as it relates to a mentor or a therapist, uh, 
I know I'm counseling two people, if it's one. Because I'm counseling the person who they're presenting themselves to be to me. And after a couple of sessions, I delve deeper and I get to meet the real person. And it's not the same person. Thank God today we can't fool him. When he found me, he found me just as I was. And if a man tell the truth, just be truthful. You know, when you're going through things, the, the hardest problem is to get people to admit what they've done. Stop blaming, stop denying, stop avoiding. Just tell the truth. Just tell the truth. I don't have no heaven or hell to put you in. Because the same one that's talking to you done committed many of the same sins. We've all fallen short of the glory of it. Well, look, that's not the sermon for today. I have a whole nother sermon for you. But I just wanted to say that I'm just glad he was tired this morning. And he ain't opened his mouth but a little bit. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And uh, I don't know what your pastor doing. I, I, I said to my wife, I said, what are you trying to torture them or something? Have me go back over in a two, a week in a row like that? I said, uh, Pastor Smith must don't like some of his members or something like that. To have me back over again. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you, I'm so grateful and so thankful for the opportunity to preach. Uh, ten, I celebrated ten years in March. Uh, I was diagnosed with multi myeloma cancer. And so I've been fighting this form of cancer. I believe that God has healed me since 2014, but it's a very aggressive form of blood cancer. Uh, genetically, we don't know where it came from, but as you well know today, every time man makes innovative or technological advances, it's like a new disease comes out or something. You know, it's like, I'm like, okay. But anyway, I'm saying that because there were so many in the churches here locally that were dealing with the same thing that have gone on. And uh, I've been on three forms of chemotherapy since 2014. And I asked the doctor how long. He said, probably all your life. But of course, we know until then, uh, we know God could be innocent. And God heals. And, and listen, I'm okay. I don't want y'all to ever think, I'm okay. You know, my wife always said, why are you always talking about death? We live with death every day, man. We're dying. All of us right now, we don't even realize we're dying every day. There's something. Oh, Lord, help me. Pastor Rock, you listen. Brothers and sisters, when we're young, and there are genetic deficiencies in our body that we've inherited from our relatives, our bodies are strong enough, our cells are regenerating enough to fight off if there's a propensity for disease like diabetes or high blood pressure, we don't experience it until later in life when our cells stop regenerating as quickly. And that's all old age is. It's our bodies dying because our cells don't regenerate like they did when we were younger. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, so I'm saying to us that we live with death every day. So we, we know it's a, uh, an unwelcome guest, but I got somebody that can handle death. Amen? Now, so, so, so. I'll say hello to death and goodbye to death because I know one that defeated death, hell, and the grave. Mm -hmm. The only thing I told her, I said, man, let's, if I pass, don't bring no map in my house, okay? I'm going to tell you that. And, and don't bring no map in my bed. Brothers and sisters, I'm joking. I'm joking because I'm dead and gone. But I told her, if I see her with somebody, I'm going to haunt her. When she see her hair being pulled up and all that, just that's my husband ghost. That's my husband ghost. Amen. <laughs> ah, Lord, you guys make me be bad. Y'all make me be bad at this church. I want y'all to know that. I'm going to tell Pastor Smith, don't call me back over there. They're bad, Pastor. They're really bad. But I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for your smiles, your inviting attitudes, and your welcoming mindsets that tell me that this is a church where we know that prayers can be heard and blessings can be found. None of us have arrived. We all are work in progress. So we come out to show. The only difference between us and the world is they're sick, and they don't admit they're sick. We're sick, and we know we're sick. So we come to take our medicine on Tuesday nights at uh, Bible study and on Sunday mornings. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I want to just caution you this morning that you'll know you're not here by happenstance or luck today. God wanted you to be here to hear what he had to say. Amen. So we thank the Lord. Now I got my tissues so my nose runs and my sinuses. I got me some water if I get thirsty. 
My wife told me to get a bottle of, uh, of, 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 of what is it called? What is the sanitizer and everything. So I'm ready. So that means I'm going to be up here a while. I guess we'll get out here a couple of hours and stuff before we, before we go. <laughs> I tell y'all are bad. Y'all make the preacher be bad. Y'all really do. Amen. But bless you one and all. And let's look and, and, and see what God says to us today. He, he always has a word for us. I, I remember teaching in seminary in New Orleans. And sometimes young preachers would say, well, I don't know what to preach. You've got 66 books. Right. What do you mean you don't know what to preach? They got something that to preach. Just find some. Close your eyes and point to them and pick it up. Because the word of God is quick and powerful. Yes. And, 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 and he speaks to us in every aspect of the Bible. And if we would just seek to hear from him, he teaches us. As we look at the life of the characters, the Old Testament, God's interaction in the Old Testament, of the priestly sacrifices, moving on through the prophetical, the historical books, and especially the Pentateuch, we get to hear what God says to us then. So I want this morning, if you would open your Bibles with me, and keep them open, if you will, to the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Luke, chapter number 15. And I just want to let y'all know I'm going to tell on him now because he's going to be causing division in my family. Deacon Tynes told me, he told my wife last week he's giving me the check, but he want me to take her. He ain't even choose no cheap restaurant like McDonald's. He, he go choose uh, 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 what long home. Amen. And then now he got nerve after he done said the prayer to turn back and cause mess again. He said, Sister White, I'm going to give you the check. All right. <laughs> Praise. <laughs> That's my brother and my friend. Amen. In this 15th chapter, I would have you look at the, uh, a very familiar pass, passage of scripture that's found in the uh, 25th through the 30th verse. The 25th through the 30th verse. And I'm going to read uh, in your hearing from the King James Version of the Bible. And I challenge you, if you're first time coming or whatever, don't be fearful of using a table of contents. God wants to speak to you. He speaks through his word. You know, so, so don't be ashamed. I'm telling you, I used to use a table of contents because I wanted to hear what God had to say to me. Amen. Beginning in that 25th verse, now we read, and this, of course, is half the story that we normally call the prodigal son. We're going to read about the elder brother now. Now, verse 25 begins in the King James. Now, his elder brother was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked, what? does this mean? What's happening in there? What's going on? And the servant said unto him in verse 27, thy brother is come and thy father has killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound. So that verse tells us that he, the father was setting up a celebration for the son, the younger son. Now look at verse 28. This is the, the elder brother. And he was angry and would not go in. And therefore, the servant must have told the father, was looking for him, probably asked the servant, well, where's your brother? I mean, where's my brother? My son, he's outside. So he went out to him. Lord, have mercy. The father went out to him. He said, now, uh, he entreated him at the end of verse 28. says that he tried to get him to come in. He, he reached out to him in fatherly love to come in. Uh, and he said to his father in verse 29, and he answering said to his father, look, lo, that's the word lo means, means observe, pay attention. These many years do I serve you. Neither have I transgressed. I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon this thy son was come, which I devoured and wasted all your money with harlots. Well, look at what you do. You don't kill for him the fatted calf to celebrate. And he said unto him, the father said to the son, you are always with me. And all that I have is yours. Just as you know, the Jewish idiom, the idea of thought, the, the, the son is the oldest. He's going to automatically get the inheritance. Okay. And he said to the son, continuing to explain, giving him an explanation, help him understand his character. He thinks it was me. It was important that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead. He was away from us. He was living another life. But he's alive again. He came to himself and came home. And he was lost, but now he's what? He's found. 
is found. You may be seated. May the Lord have blessing to the reader, the hearer, and the doer of his most holy and divine word. From these passages, and we relate to the younger son and his opportunistic importance in relationship to the story as, as, as we move forward. But I, I want to speak to us this morning from the thought or from a subject, if you will, when faithfulness is wrong. When faithfulness, the word that we use all the time, especially in the Baptist church, when faithfulness is wrong. Let, let me get, begin this morning uh, with some rhetorical questions. Let me, let me ask you, what do you come to church for? I'm talking to each of us individually. I come with my wife, but God speaks to us individually because we all at different levels. We're all struggling with certain issues and certain things. We may never tell anybody, no matter how old we are, we don't operate in perfection and we have not attained. We are still growing. And the moment you stop growing and metamorphosizing, you might need to struggle and check your salvation because we grow. We're being made into the image of, 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 the, of the sun, the Colossian writer tells us. So many of the trials and tribulations you complain about God is allowing to happen in your life to mold you. Amen. No, I, I, okay, I'm, I'm going to preach this morning. I'm going to preach. What is your purpose for going to church? What is your purpose for even joining a church? And, and, and what does the church have to do with your relationship with God? Mm. Things to think about. One of the reasons we come to church and we join is because God commands in Hebrews 10, 25, where he says, listen, don't forsake your assembling of yourselves together. There's strength in numbers. Come together. Come together. Be together. Lean on each other. Uh, but equally important, we should attend a local church and be a member so that we might be discipled. You know what that means? That means to learn, to grow, to see. See, I can't grow according to Deacon Time's teaching. I got to grow according to what God has for me. But we both hear the word. And we apply it to our lives. And I may grow just this much. But Deacon Diane may grow this much. God deals with each of us where we are. And he deals with us different. He's our heavenly father. So a father knows his children. Listen, brothers and sisters. We attend the local church and become a member to be discipled, to be taught to be trained, to be equipped in the things of God. If not, we're just floating around there with superstitions and cultural mores and things we heard and all that. I was talking to my middle son the other day, and um, he was trying to get his life together, and he started saying, well, yeah, Dad, I, I don't receive that. I rebuke the devil and all that. I said, hold on, son. I said, this is what your daddy does for a living. So... Well, the guy at work, I said, no, the guy at work ain't your daddy, and he's not your pastor. I said, now, he might be able to teach you how to drive that forklift and not to drop stuff, and I'll get out the way, but you're in my realm now. And if you're going to talk to the God who you accepted as Lord and Savior when you were seven years old, I got to tell you how to relate to him. You see, so I'm saying that to say to us that as we come we need to come with a sense of expectation. God has something for you. You made it out here this way for a reason. God woke you up and didn't let you come to church. There's a reason. God just, he's a, a God of order. He's not a God of chaos. He's not a, preco a, a, a precocious God. He works things out according to his efficacious will. The local church is the training mechanism whereby we are equipped to impact the world for Christ. Bible study, Sunday school, 11 a.m. worship, mission trips, etc. These are all educational mo models that teach us uh, about Jesus and his love and how to share Jesus and his love with the world uh, through the sacrifice that he made for unsaved people to come to know Christ. Two things happen in the church, New Testament church. Christians are built up. When you come to church, you come to be encouraged. You come to be instructed. You come to be edified. 
You come to be comforted. And fifth and lastly, you come to be corrected. So through the week, not only have we done some things, it's some of our theology that might be messed up. And let me tell you something, so frightening thing, for you to believe God for something he never promised. I remember during the faith movement, when I at first accepted my calling back in Los Angeles, I had attended the biggest uh, church that was a uh, black church, was in the Church of God in Christ in, uh, what was it, I can't remember what it was, but um, I attended the church, and, and there were lots of friends that went there, and they had invited me to come, so I come, and uh, we got out. They were all talking about what they're going to claim. My brother, a brother said, man, come to my house. I'm going to show you this Mercedes I got over my bed. And I said, okay, you got a picture of the Mercedes. Now, I wasn't really knowledgeable. I was just saved, okay, announcing my calling. He said, yeah, I'm going to claim that God's going to give. Because he said we delight ourselves in him. He'll give us the desires of our heart. Now listen, that scripture's in the Bible. But you've got to interpret it in light of its context properly. Now think about it in common sense. Are you going to give your son anything he wants? You're going to go into debt and sell a house so he could have a Rolls Royce? You must be crazy. Uh-uh. No, that just didn't make sense to me. And as I got older and more learned in, in scripture, I realized that the scripture means that if you delight yourself in the Lord, stay with me now, I'm delighting myself in the Lord. Now, something's going to happen when I delight myself in the Lord. When the natural comes in contact with the supernatural, when the natural which trust is, trust the supernatural, the supernatural is going to have an impact on the natural. Watch. I'm delighting myself in the Lord. Now, watch this. So now, my desire becomes his desire, or his desire becomes my desire. Now as I'm delighting myself in him, I don't want nothing he had for me unless he's, he's giving it to me. I don't want nothing I'm making up myself. I want what God wants for me. Yeah. Does that make sense? You want what God wants for you. I know I need to be preaching my message, but I'm, I'm getting there. One of the first and premier lessons we learn in church is about faith. That adjective, as we look at it, its root, its root word, you know, when you add a suffix to it and extend that suffix, suffix, the word takes on a quality that doesn't take away or detract from its original meaning, but it lays for us grammatically the true impact. When we think about the word faith, it's used in various contexts through the Bible. We can talk about our body of beliefism. That's our faith, our Christian faith. But I'm referring to that which we do in our service to God. Have faith toward God in our service. And when we put that F-U-L on there as a suffix, it literally means in the old King James to be full of faith. And then we say faithfulness, the N-E-S-S on anything, means subjectively to be an overkill. It means to have an abundance of something. It means to spill over. So to truly be full of faithfulness means to have faith that spills over and trust God beyond and above measure. Now, we're called to be faithful. That's the first thing we learn. To be faith. Faithfulness means to be dependable, to be reliable, to have a word. You know, in leadership classes, that I taught in seminary, I explained to people accountability plus responsibility plus commitment, that equals faithfulness. To be accountable means to be answerable for something. Right? It means you, you, were, you, you were answerable. I'm gonna answer, I'm gonna give you an answer why it wasn't done or why it wasn't successful. To be responsible means to be the one who makes sure it gets done. And we began to learn this, and we don't call that in our homes, especially as, as, as black parents. We never say, but we learn faithfulness at home. As parents, we didn't even know we were teaching. When we teach them to have a word, we teach them to respect elders. We teach them that while we're gone, we want the kitchen clean, or we want this swept. We want you to put out the garbage. You're teaching them responsibility. This is your job. You're responsible for this. Son, why wasn't the garbage put out? Well, Dad, I didn't. That's accountability. 
now as I leave and you mature, I'm going to expect more of you. And I always expect more of the older child than the younger child because I leave him in charge. So when stuff don't get done and he knows what's supposed to get done, I don't go to them. I go to him. My wife gets on me sometimes because I always say, my children are a lot like me. They have her though, her law too. But you know how it is, the kids, they know who to call. They don't call Ghostbusters. <laughs> and they don't call me. They call their mom. Well, I'm trying to tell y'all, brothers and sisters, life is something. And I'm saying, when we're going to walk with the Lord, it can be very difficult today. To have a family, to be rooted and grounded in Christ, because there's so much noise outside. Yeah. We send them to school with people that are not saved. They go to parties with people that are not saved. They go on trips with people that are not saved. And, and you can't shield them from everything, because some of life's greatest lessons are taught out there in life, where you make mistakes. But you can't say no. Even at this age, my oldest is 30 or something like that, they still call their mom. <laughs> Y'all know what that means. Because they know she can get to me. You think that's not slick? <laughs> but yeah, you can't get an A in school. My youngest is at LSU. He can't get, now he's supposed to be working for two years now. But he's doing other stuff. His rent due. $700. I talk to him, you go to the job, you know, I'm gonna flip my burgers. Look, son, sometimes you gotta do what we don't wanna do. You better flip, you better flip as many burgers as you can find to flip. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I know I'm supposed to be in the check, but I didn't come to complain, but I'm trying to help us get our house straight. Amen. We can't serve the Lord with gladness if we got confusion at home. We just can't. That's why the requirement is in 1 Timothy 3. That it's a good thing to desire all those things. But one of the things, a man got to have his house in order. And that's a battle today. Because you have the kids saying, well, they say, well, their mama let them. Well, I'm not their mama, and this ain't their mama house. If you want to do that, you go over there and stay over there. And it hurts. It hurts not to want to see your children hurt. But we have to stand for truth. Because we got to give an answer one day. See, I can't answer for them, but I got to answer for me. When I stand before God and I say, well, my wife did this, God must say, you ain't talking about your wife. But Lord, Lord, these are my children. I'm saying, you ain't talking about your children. Did you do what I told you to do? They're going to just have to be mad. Because I want to please God, and I want to make it in. And I want to make my calling and election sure. That's what I want to do. Lord, help us. Forgive me, brothers and sisters, if I get personal with that, but we all struggle with that, and we just were talking about learning what it means to be saved. Well, then, then we come to the church. You know why there's such a connection between the church and faith? A man can't read in his own heart. It's a strong word if you think about it subjectively and grammatically today, the word rule, but it means to be able to be in control of your man. Now, many men have exacerbated that, trying to control their wives and think, but I'm the head and I'm the leader and all that. Then if you're the leader, do what the leader does. Lead your family to church. Lead them in prayer and try to keep on. Be the leader. You can't just leave when it's convenient for you. A leader sets an example. He don't just give mouth service, he lives it. The struggle with us in knowing that the church runs just like the home. God has given some institutions that he has ordained. He's ordained the government. That's why the government can do capital punishment in, in jail. He's ordained marriage between a man and a woman. All right? He's ordained the family. He's ordained them. And he's ordained the church, those four entities. That's why the devil is in attack mode on all those areas to get people confused and all that. Man, listen, I don't need Trump to endorse no Bible for me. I don't need him to give me no gold shoes. I don't need none of that. My Jesus paid it all. 
and I'm running with him. You can't add nothing to it. You can't take away from it. All right, I'm not going to get political because I'm a senior pastor, and I don't want him to say, well, wife, what you was talking about? I don't want him to say all that to me. I want him to say you did it right. Uh, in the Bible, in the Bible, faithfulness, come on, I'm going to hurry now. In the Bible, faithfulness is always related to stewardship. To be a steward of something means to be a caretaker of something. But every time we leave home, we leave the oldest child in charge, we're leaving them in their stewardship. They're being responsible. Right. We have deacons and elders in the church. They're responsible for the thing. We're not only just as functioning, but we're responsible in the spiritual sense. Yeah. The pastor is responsible for feeding us the word of God. Right. Well, when we realize that, that means everything we have belongs to God. Yeah. It's not your house. It's not your car. It's, it belongs to God. Somebody say, well, if, if it's not my house, not my car, then this, these bills must be God's too. Yeah, they're his too. <laughs> they're his too. They are. They are. Where faithfulness is your dependability, stewardship is our belief that the Bible teaches that all that we possess belong to God. And, and because all of us belong to God, we are simply stewards or caretakers. That very house we have. We have three acres on that house. Listen, the man that well, had it before, he died. And I took it over. I can't charge God with what he did, and God can't charge me. Right now, I'm the steward because it's my turn to stand with my, in that place. So it belongs to God, even though it changes hands. In our local church, we know we demonstrate our stewardship by our time, our talent, and our treasure. We give these things to God because God teaches them in Scripture as it relates to us being New Testament church members that we are to be faithful in giving to God. Our time. We are to be faithful in giving to God our talent or our ability to serve with our spiritual gifts. And we're supposed to be faithful to God in money. We're supposed to give money to the local church. Somebody said, well, I, I can't give it to God. No, you don't give to God. You give to as unto the Lord. That's the phrase that's used in the Bible. You give it to the church. And they, in turn, do what the church needs to do because it requires money to survive out here. Things break, and they have to be fixed. And we use that money. I'll never forget that. You know, I told people at some of the churches I pastored in, in uh, New, uh, California and in New Orleans, I I told him, I said, listen, when you give that money to the church, forget about it. Act like you never had it. Well, they might do this. Now, if you know that they're doing something wrong with the money, then be concerned. But other than that, don't worry about it. Because you gave it as unto the Lord. saying this morning. And, and I'm not trying to be a fool. I'm not telling you to be no fool if you know something is going on. But brothers and sisters, we're giving as unto the Lord. You can't put it in God's hand. God don't need your money. The church needs your money. See? And one last thing, I'm going to throw this out there. This is for land, yeah. When we have something at the church, and every church I pastored, I told them, why would you cook something and then cut it in half and bring half to the church? Oh, yeah. Pastor Rocky, you might not want me back at this. <laughs> or why would you go to the fellowship and have the whole plan and they have something left and still you say, is there anyone that needs this? One says, well, I ain't still cooking at home now. So we're going to have this for dinner the next few days. What you brought, you brought as a general. <laughs> if you want to take some home, to keep at home <laughs> and give this to the church. There may be a family there, some visitors. Somebody may really be hungry. They don't, you may not know it. That you can give to, I have all this stuff. Would, would someone like to have this? Yes, I'll take that. Then, then take it. Because when you serve others, you're serving God. When we serve others, we're serving God. Okay, my wife going to tell me how much time I spend. The Bible says it this way in 1 Corinthians 4.2. Moreover, in addition, 
It is required that a steward be found faithful. We don't hear that until we do our marriage vow. But we know what it means. To be faithful means to be committed. Jesus was committed to the cross. He, wants, he didn't want to do it when he got in the garden. He tried to wash great drops of blood. But he said, Lord, if it's possible, just take it from me. But he knew it wasn't possible. That's why he came back to that other phrase to conclude the sentence. He says, nevertheless, as I will, I'm sorry. I'm destined to this horrible death on the cross. He was a steward. We are all stewards. And as men, Christian men, we are leaders in our home. No matter what our wives tell us, you are a leader. Not because you chose to be a leader, but because God made you a leader. Yes. You don't believe this? Go in the Bible. God made men to be. He gave them what they need. Now, if they don't operate in that, for sure, you can't truly be a good leader if you don't know the Lord. Because he's an illustrated aspect of what Jesus' life was about with such a list of us. The reason I'm saying that is not to belay the fact that we have women as our help me, but God has given us a role. And that's what we have a problem with today. Okay? I, that's a whole nother term. I'm not going to do that. If, 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 if Pastor Rocket had me back and y'all don't leave no nasty notes on my car or throw no rocks at my car, I, I, I'll come back and talk about that. So what we mentioned thus far, we can say that a Christian demonstrates his love and obedience to God by his faithfulness to his local church. Okay? Now, this opens the door for another set of questions. Stay with me. Are you a good steward? See, I, as a leader of my home, I'm responsible for my wife and for my children. I'm not only her priest and her prophet, I'm a protector and her divider, her provider. And even if she makes more money than me, I'm still her leader. Y'all ain't, ain't going to get and This is some deep stuff I'm talking about. This is, this is biblical. Just because you make more money than me don't make you get to change God's program. I'm not a leader because you ordained me. I'm a leader because God said I'm a leader. Go back to Genesis. Let's walk through the Bible. Let's see what God said. And if you married the wrong man, whose fault is that? Okay, see? See, y'all keep making me go over there and stuff because you saw the tall, dark, handsome brother. Or the tall line, instead of getting a little short brother like me, you know, who's going to stay level close to the ground. The tall you are, it's hard to get back down there. You, you know, you lift it up and everything. I'm a handsome man. But listen, you better marry a spiritual man. You better find somebody to love the Lord. If a person loves the Lord, they're going to know how to love you right. But if you don't love the Lord, if you're serving the flesh, I know it's another sermon for another day, but you better stop choosing what look good to you. Ooh, look at him, baby. And he, ooh, that's a fine man. You go get him. You go get him. I'll preach the funeral. I'll preach the funeral. Everything that look good to you ain't good for you. Yeah. And stop thinking your love going to change you. Oh, yeah, some sisters say that. I love that. My love. You got such strong love. You got three things you can't change in this life. People, place, and things. Can't change. <laughs> you can't. When I talk to the parents of, 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 of drug addicts and I tell them, you can't change him. But he's stealing. Put him out. He cussing me out. Put him out. You see, the sin that's committed is so powerful, you can't play with it. You got to deal with it. Now, you going to let him bring all of us down? It ain't happening, baby. It ain't happening. You go. Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm over time. I'll just share with y'all one other word. Because I put my children out. My wife don't believe. She think I'm crazy. You disrespect me? You can't listen to me? You going to have somebody come and bring drugs to my house? You got to go. Because they coming and they killing everybody. If I don't love me first, how can I love him? She said, Dad, you want some more? I said, yeah. Get your stuff. Get your little stick and tie it up there and get on your shoulder. <laughs> Lord, he, you don't believe me? Ask that woman right there. I'm not going to get killed over no foolishness. There's danger enough out here. Why well, I got to look for problems? 
So we passed on the corner the next day. He was at the gas station. <laughs> we went out there that night of the next day. He was sleeping on the bench. Y'all think I'm crazy, huh? I said, say that little man crazy. Brothers and sisters, there's a right way and a wrong. I've lived it. I've been all over. I've preached all over. I've been in music all my life. Some background with people, Bryson, Alec Cole, Irwin. I've been everywhere. I've done so much. Everything. I ain't lying to you. There are things I'll never tell you I've done and been exposed to. And when God saved me, he saved to the other day. I knew there was times where I was in certain neighborhoods and doing it was God that kept me. I know it. And you think I'm going to play with God? No, I'm not going to play with him. When I danced with that partner over there, I gave him every move I had. Now I've changed partners, but I'm still dancing. Amen? For the Lord. For the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I'm saying that not to be bragging or anything, but to tell you. So, so about two or three days later, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I know he's all right. He ain't too far from the house. My wife saw him. She got out the car and went over and she said, oh, my Lord. The boy had a bath and three, a bath. He needs a wash off with a hose pipe. He don't need no bath. She, she said, we got home. She said, she just looked at me and she said, go get my son. See, I tell everybody, I'm domesticated. I've been married 30 something years. I know how when she say something, what she mean, and I know how to be obedient. All I said was, yes, dear. <laughs> and I went and got him. I love him. It hurt me to see him hurt. But he needs to learn a lesson. And if I'm going to be a good father, my form of cancer can come back at any time. And if you know anything about cancer, it's always more aggressive when it comes back. And this form always comes back. But God has given me two year anniversary and more. While so many others have passed on. I don't have no side effects. All that chemo and I don't have no side. Right now, I could take answers. That normal stuff over time, that don't do nothing for me. I need strong stuff to work it because my body's so saturated with medication. But I can do everything I've always done. I can cut trees. I can go to the dump. I can climb on top of the house. You know, aside from my aunt, normal dudes at home, which is running the dishwasher, washing clothes, folding clothes, <laughs> and stuff like that. So. Brothers and sisters, I hope it is my prayer that I've helped someone because this is what I do. I've always been concerned about behavior. From a young child, I've always been concerned with the psychology of baby. Is it time for me to stop? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just checking if the musician, you know, he said, okay, now it's time, Pastor. It's time to go to football game coming up. All right, so. Uh, let me, let, let, me go on, let me go on and finish. Because Deacon Tynes and, and, and Deacon, they're making me uh, act like this, and y'all doing all this. Y'all are causing all of this. So I'm going to tell uh, Pastor, we call him Rocky, he needs to get his church together because you got some bad people over there. Do yeah. you know we could be faithful to our church and be wrong? Faithfulness can be wrong if your motive is not right. That's why Jesus kept telling the Pharisees and Sadducees, listen, I've come, I've come to not, to not to do away with the law, but to be the period on the end of the law. The law is there, but listen, it's not what you do, it's what's in your heart. Are you doing this for the right reason? We could be wasting a lot of our time because we're doing something just because it makes us feel good. But is the Lord being served? All the places I've been, all the places I've preached, I've met all kinds of people. In the Pentecostal church, Church of God, Church of God in Christ, Church of God, Apostolic, uh, you know, non-denominational church. And there are certain people you can see, they do things to be seen of men. And we have to be careful when we have opportunity that we don't try to puff ourselves out. And that we're really doing it for God to be glorified. This, this, this wonderful story, as we talk, we always know from a very early age, one of the first stories you learn about is called the prodigal son. It's, it's, it's such an innovative 
and he jiggled it in the store. It's a miracle, if you will, of a young boy. Uh, the father is seen as God, and the young boy goes because it's a young boy that asked his father for a substance of living, and he went away and wasted. But that the Lord said, see, we can let go of God, but God don't let go of us. <laughs> so while he was out there, God goes in the hog pens. I want you to know that too. That's where he found me. Now, I wasn't a pig. I was in the slot. And God picked me up and dug me up. And I, I'm saying that for us to understand that we read got the, the gospel writers, Luke. Luke, Luke, was, Luke is one of the few people that God has blessed with the canonization of scripture that he wrote two books and he was a Gentile. He wasn't Jewish. He gave us the gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. And he brought a lot of his material from Peter because he wasn't there to walk with the Lord Jesus. But Peter was. And he could trust his word as he wrote. And we call him Dr. Luke because as we read through his writings, we see his reference to medical terminology. So this is a man that God chose to receive his word so that without error or truth, to share with us analytical insight into different people. Now, Jesus has been talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees. They, those are dark enemies. They hate him. They're trying to trap him. But by the time he gets to this 15th chapter, he'd already in the 14th chapter told him, listen, God's son is sent me to seek and save that which is lost. And the Pharisees and Sadducees didn't even realize he talking to you, fool. Y'all are. Stories of, of the lost coin that the lady had to find and the lost sheep leave the 99 and go get the one. It says that heaven rejoices. The angel in heaven rejoices when one person gets saved. And then he tells us about this powerfully provocative and just uh, imaginatively demonstrative story of the prodigal son. But oftentimes we read that which is so, seems so obvious. We all want to Love that ending, huh? Prophet the son, he go away. He's the underdog. And he comes back. He comes to himself. Gets right with his father. God receives him. But sometimes we don't even have to lie if our mind is messed up. If our thinking is messed up, you could be right in the middle of blessing, and because of your wicked mindset, you can't even see what God has given you. Mm-hmm. At first, I say, well, Lord, you know, you gave me cancer. I, I say, Lord, give me cancer. Lord, you let me get cancer. Now, I'm not the youngest one in these children. You know, back then, they were much younger and stuff. And I'm like, Lord, I don't know what you got. And maybe you want me to know who it's going to be. But I tell you, one thing, he was working it out. Yeah. He was working it out. Just happened to be down my, my medical. I was trying to get it. I was, I was fasting at the time.
Brother Jesus said, you telling me I got cancer? I can't have no cancer. Yes, you can. Yes, you, you're not above it. And I get there, and they send me to John Hopkins, and I do some consultation. I do some testing with some bone marrow and some stuff. Man, I'm walking my line. What's wrong with you? Now, I could have went crazy, denied it, did all this stuff. But you know what? God gave me a, a set of spirit. And then my wife came to me, and she looked me in my eyes. She said, whatever happens, we're going to go through together. That did something to me. So when you're at your lowest, that's why we come together in the fellowship, to lift one another up. Yeah. You don't know what people are going through when they come to church. Yeah. You don't know where they've been, how they've been beat up during the week. Yeah. And you're not smiling, you're frowning at the door, come on in. You know, <laughs> fill out that visitor card right there. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we minister with our attitude. And we minister with the, exhi with the exhibit of our disposition. But look, the, the, the son has stayed home. And look at how he acts. Look at how he acts. When this is about his own brother, his own flesh and brother. Listen to what he said. He said, now, now, now he, he, he tells us something because of his responses. He tells us that he was home, but he had never checked his motives. Motives can be deceptive. You could do something as a practice ongoingly, successfully for so long that you don't do it with the right heart. And you've been doing it so long, you don't want to teach nobody else to do it. And our churches, especially our smaller black churches, that caught up cataclysmically in the change that happens to us as we see our culture change and we see the, 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 the demography uh, in the topography of the land change, where our black churches which were founded by our grandfathers and grandmothers and those beyond that, things change, but we're not willing to change. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling us to compromise the word of God. No way, no how. But there's things we can do so that when our children come and we train them, that so they finish school, why do they leave their church? Mm -hmm. Why do they go somewhere else? If they want to be entertained, then they need to go, because church can be entertained, but it's not designed to entertain them. Yeah. And many people come to the church with an entertainment uh, perspective. I saw a young lady the other day, I said, you left Oak Shade. Oh, yeah, they didn't have this for the children. I said, well, why didn't you stay and start that? <laughs> See, they don't like that. Everybody want a microwave ready-made church. They don't want to work. Nope. Well, how you going to do your service if you don't work? Yeah. Lord, y'all keep making me go everywhere I ain't supposed to go. This elder son response tells us something. All the years he stayed home, cooked, clean, put the garbage out, his motive for doing it may not have been right. He may have started out that way because his daddy taught him, but as, as time changed, he began to probably think, I, I'm older. Dad better do this for me. We can get very selfish, I'm telling you. We can get very selfish. Uh, and, and, and we know he loved his father and, 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 and you know, had been there, but, but why? We must be careful. We must watch ourselves. But we could start out on fire for God and be right and end up still on fire for God but dead wrong. Listen to me. There's a right way to be right and a wrong way to be right. I tell my son to apologize to your brother. I'm sorry. Okay, he did the action, but his attitude wasn't right. He's got a right way to be right, and he's got a wrong way to be right. Does everybody understand that? Because we married, those of us in relationships and all that stuff, and we get that attitude and start jerking that neck and swinging that head and all that kind of stuff. Brothers and sisters, we got to do it God's way. God's watching us. He's watching us. So let me finish this up because I see the, the big hand is on the six. That means I need to go. Okay. So as we work in the church, we got to keep an eye on ourselves. Not everybody else. Check yourself out. Are you doing right? Is God getting glory out your life? See? A study of the text will reveal that this eldest son exhibits three tendencies that he felt his faithfulness to his father could excuse. Three. Three all words. 
Uh, first of all, if you will, and you look at that 27th and that 28th verse, he felt that his faithfulness should excuse a spirit of hatefulness. A spirit of hatefulness. In Romans 14, 16, we're told not to let our ill will, let, not to let our good be evil spoken of. You can be doing something good, but because your attitude is wrong, people don't even want to be around you. They hate to see you coming and glad to see you going because your attitude ain't right. A nasty attitude. I mean, if I ask Sister White to fix me something and she get the food, here, here's your food. We're going to have a problem. Me and Sister White. Y'all might not never know about it. But we need to risk relationships. People try to think of that love building relationship. No, you don't. The first thing that the second word is love. Lost my word. I know what I'm talking about. I teach this kind of stuff. I do it every day. If you don't respect somebody, I don't care how much you talk about, how can you love somebody you don't respect? Respect means to hold them in a high esteem. And many people can't love other people because they don't know how to love themselves. Because they've been through stuff. And they don't know how to get out of it. Brother and sister, it took steps to get up to where you are. Now you come to me, I'm going to help you go back. And But most people, keep in mind people out there at work. People who want to talk about their problems and people who want to do something about their problems. And when you want to do something, it's hard. Because you got to go back every step to see how you got to then look at what you did to this one. Look at this decision. And it's a reminder. It's hurtful to go back through those steps. Because when you did them, you didn't think about it. Now you're getting ready to examine them. Intellectually. Hmm? Psychologically. And you're getting ready to see the mess you caused. And then you're going to also find it's very hurtful. You caused this. You made that mistake. You chose him. You chose her. You got ahead of God. You lie. I don't marry nobody I don't counsel. If I don't counsel you, I don't marry you. And I don't counsel you for no one hour and stuff. Marriage is a lifelong commitment. How am I going to teach you how to love somebody and be right with them in one hour? Over here. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Look at verse 27, 28. This spirit of hatefulness he exhibits. He said, See, your, your brother's coming, your father had killed the calf because he received him. And the son said, he was angry. He didn't even try to hide it. He was angry. And he wouldn't go in. He had a bad attitude and a bad disposition. Look at that. So his father had to come out to him. We know when we hurt our children, all of our children are different. I have six children through that woman right there. And they all are different. Different. And when the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go, look it up. It means to take the child in the bent. The word bent literally means the old King James, old Elizabethan word. It means each child with his personality inclines himself in certain ways. It's the parent's job to see that and feed that. So that child grows straight in the path that he's going. Some, some children are inclined to engineering and stuff. Then feed it. Some children are inclined to being teachers. Feed it. But don't make them be what you want them to be. They have to live their own life. That's a, oh, no, I got three or four sermons I got to write down. Now when I come back <laughs> over here. He was hateful. And hateful just means just mean spirit. Just want to hurt somebody because you mad. It's a misdirected anger. And the things we ought to hate, because God says he hates some things. And we really ought to hate the things that God hates, but we don't. So he felt, I could be hateful. Why? Because I've been here with you. And you never did this for me. Well, why didn't you do it for yourself? And see, I could kind of understand what he is, because I know uh, 14 of us, that I'm the oldest, that my dad uh, could do certain things to make me feel special. Parents don't always think of everything. They don't. And if we really love them, we give them a pass on certain things. He's been in the house. The daddy says, everything I have in here is always for you. You could go in my room. You could get money. You could do all these things. But we want to be, every now and then we want our daddy to make, make, make something special out of us. Make us. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I can understand the son. 
But the way he deals with it is wrong. He deals with it with anger. And the Bible said the wrath of man doesn't work the righteousness of God. We can't be godly and be angry. We just can't. So he felt in that 27 and 28 verse he could do it. What did the servant think? See, we got to remember people are watching us. That's why as, as husband and wife, we try not to other argue in front of our children because they're like this. They learn. My daughter's learning how to be treated as a woman from the way her dad was treating her. And my sons are learning how to, a man is supposed to treat a woman or a wife from their daddy's attitude. And believe me, people learn more by what you do instead of what you say. Lord, y'all getting some good stuff this morning. Uh, not only should it excuse, he thought it should excuse a spirit of hatefulness, but secondarily, he feels that it should excuse a spirit of ha um, a haughtiness. Look at verse, if you will, number 29. And he said to his father, look, all these years I've been with you, I didn't break none of your rules, dad. And yet you ain't never killed no calf for me. That I might make merry with my friends. See, when we do that anger, because it's emotional, what we do is we begin to act out on it. And it doesn't really reflect uh, how we really feel, because we're hurting. And, you know, most men, especially black men, when we're hurt, we get angry. And we speak out in anger. This is where domestic abuse comes from. Because, oh, Lord, y'all got me. Y'all get some good stuff for me. The, the strength of a woman is her mouth. The strength of a man is his physical strength. Now watch this. Watch. Don't you go twist my word, my word. A woman could say things that could break a man. If a man loves his wife, what the Lord said? When a man loves his wife, did he say that? He said that. When a man loves a woman, he will sleep out in the rain. I turned to a guy, that guy must have been 69. He had a little bitty woman. Came in and he was wiping his eyes. I don't love him. I don't want to be with him. Oh, he just was ruined. A woman has a strength over a man. Why do you think she can help me? She can help him, or she can destroy him by her word. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Uh, and a man gets physical because he can't counteract a woman's mouth. You can say some things mess a brother up. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have him all thinking he can't do his work at work. Or he, uh, he can't. Uh, what, what, ma'am, did Johnny, he left him going to work, but you ain't tell him what you put in Johnny's head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to let, do a relationship seminar for y'all one day so y'all can say, wow, I didn't know that. Well, you're going to know it now. Verse 29. Let me go on. The spirit of hardness. Hardness is a spirit of, of lifted up, deserving. I earned this. You should have gave me this. And that's why we have to be careful with raising our children. Because if we're not careful, we make them think the world owes them something. And I tell my kids, you know, be careful. When you talk to the police, be respectful. They got power over you, dude. I'm not going to do nothing. But you're going to help in jail. You're going to help that. I said, I'm 70 years old. And I still, yes, sir. I don't just stop by places twice in my life, and I travel all over the United States. It's just something. I don't know that the God protects me, but my kids make up for every time I ain't never been caught by the police. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, son, respect them. They are powerful. They can do things to you. But I ain't gonna, you can talk all that smack you want to talk. But when they get you there, they can do things to you. They can drive off with you, get in the back of that car, beat you up. They can, they can make up a lie. You know, they can do anything. So just be respectful. Yes, sir, officer. Here's my wife. My life is my registration. Did I do something wrong? Yes, sir. Officer, I, I'm, I'm trying to work on that. My tongue is going to go down. I just haven't had the moment. Be honest and respectful. And the Holy Spirit of God is going to use you to get you right. And to repel that devil who might be a racist. Stop you, young black man. But you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. You got to hold them when you deal with these police, young black man. Shoot, I'm, I'm going to tell Rocker, he's going to have to give me some extra for uh, doing all this preaching I'm doing. Uh -uh. 
Don't y'all tell y'all pastor that. Don't y'all say that. Mm -hmm. He felt it was old to him. In, in Romans 12, 13, Paul told you, he said, don't, don't think that of yourself no higher than you are. You ain't all that. You just ain't all that. Come on, I'm closing with this one. This last one. I gave you, uh, the, the son felt he should, should excuse a spirit of hatefulness, mad about his little brother coming home, and the daddy making a big to-do out of it. Uh, uh, spirit of, that felt like his, his attitude should forgive a spirit of hardiness because he'd been with the daddy. He felt this was old to him. Now, he's there all the time, Deacon Shine, but he, and he's doing right, but his motive's not right. How can God honor your motive if your motive's not right? Last but not least, he felt that uh, his time with his father should, should excuse, if you will. Come on, where my, where my notes at? Don't, don't get me lost here, Lord. All right, now. All right. Mm, mm, I'm lost now. One, two, come on now. Come on, notes. I don't know where I'm going. Don't y'all, don't be rushing me. I'm coming this. I'm, 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 I'm trying to just see what I did with my notes. Help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, verse number 30. I'm so sorry, brothers and sisters. Forgive me. I'm an older man. I got to write stuff down. Verse 30. He says now, watch this. But after he fussed at his daddy, disrespected him, he says, you never gave me a, a, a party or nothing like that. Verse 30, but as soon as your son, this your son, see, he even makes it stand out from them having the same mom and daddy. This your son, this scoundrel came home. Soon as he come home, you make a big special to do about him. Mm, this son who had devoured his living with prostitutes. Mm, and you're going to kill a fatty calf to celebrate him? Oh, my Lord. If I talk to my daddy like that, not only would I have no teeth, but one of my lips would probably be gone, too. Mm -hmm. See, this he thinks you'd forgive this spirit, if you will, of heartness. So we did hatefulness, hardiness, and our heart. He don't even have a heart. To have a heart is to show compassion, to tell you, we didn't know where your brother was. He was just out there lost. Nobody heard from him because if you remember the story, when he took the money, he went in a far away country. Isn't that what we try to do? We, when we know that we want to do something wrong, we go way away. Now we need help. I can't get over there to no Italy. I ain't flying no plane. I'm not dropping out of the sky. And I ain't paying all that money. So if you run away, you better run away with the And all the planes crash. No. No. But but that's what we do. We get as far as we can from that which can save us. And what do we need saving from? Ourselves. Oh, Lord, I hope I'm helping uh, somebody this morning. Sometimes we forget where we've done, been and what we do. And when you messed up, you come to that one place, the church, where we just might be forgiven. We might be able to get it right. And when we are willing to accept people and receive them into the midst, we tell them what we're saying is, I've been here. Somebody help me. I'm going to help you. Lean on me, brother. Sit with me. We'll make it. I'm closing, brother. I'm closing. You don't have to leave. I'm closing. All right. I'm, I'm going to close with this. We must be watched that we don't get like this older brother. We've been in church. We're faithful. We're good stewards. We come every Sunday and stuff. But make your call and election sure by checking your bucket to make sure that it's doing what it's doing for the Lord. We don't own no church. We don't own no pews or chairs. Everything we have belongs to God. So we have no heaven or hell to condemn somebody or put them in. That's not our place. Our place is to preach the gospel, live the gospel, and the Holy Spirit draws them in. That's what I call it. So we have to be careful that when we're called to faithfulness, that we're called in the right spirit. This young man, this older brother started out pretty good. But somewhere, somehow, he, he lost the perspective. 
He was good, but he was also bad. Sounds like us, doesn't it? He was right, but he was also wrong. Mm -hmm. Somewhere, if you will, along the line, he had changed. He had put on the mask of hypocrisy. He was doing all the right things on the outside, but all for the wrong reasons on the inside. When we look at TV, we sometimes see this St. Jude commercial and this young man that's a bribe, brain cancer, talks about, I'm good on the outside. <laughs> but I'm mad. Sometimes we get there. Where our insides are messed up. And we got to do like David. We got to cry out and say, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm crying, Lord, but I can't do it by myself. Lord, can you come in and help me? Can you do for me and in me what I can't do for myself? Yeah. Forgive me. I just get so, I get so full when I preach the word of God. I just I can't help it because I know what God has done for me. Do you know what God has done for you? Yeah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. This, 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 this older brother teaches us something. Sometimes God will take drastic action to expose us and to directly correct our drastic behavior. It took the younger brother coming home, just his coming home, to show this older brother, all these years I've been gone, but you've been gone just like this. You were there, but your heart wasn't there. You were there helping dad, but your mind wasn't there. You were doing all the things that daddy wanted you to do, but you weren't doing them out of love. You were doing them because uh, you were expecting something in return. And now that I've come and interrupted your dream, uh, you've had a rude awakening. I'm telling you, just like I had to come to myself in the pig pen, you got to come to yourself, big brother. Get right with God and do the right thing. Because he sees your heart. He sees through all the malarkey in the games. You might be able uh, to fool some of the people some of the time. You might even fool the people all of the time. But you can't fool God none of the time. He knows you. He made you and he knows all about you. Yeah, it took this younger son coming home to show the father what was really in the oldest son's heart. And it would seem that this, uh, this elder boy should take a lesson from his younger brother. Although the younger brother messed up, he was, was for real. And when you're going to make a change, and when you're going to deal with God, you got to be for real. You can't play no games because our God is an all-seeing and an all-knowing God. He looks on the inward man, and he knows your heart even before you know it. But what I love about this story is that both these sons were messed up. But there was love. Somebody help me. Love was caught in the middle. I, I see the cross in this fall. sacrifice my only son for you. How dare you believe I won't be there for you? No matter what you go through, I'm with you. I'm with you even to the end of the world. Yeah, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you. You need not fear no evil, for thou art with me. How is that? Thy rod and thy staff they come you. Thou brings and anoints my head. You prepare a table even for me in the presence of my enemies. You think I can't trust a God like that? Each of us are here today because God has brought us through something. He's made a way for us. He's shown us how to get through. And how dare us have an attitude and believe that we can't make it with God. With God, all things are possible. 
With God, ain't nothing too hard. With God, he can put one, can put a thousand, just like two, can put 10,000 of us. You think I wouldn't trust a God like that? A God who never fails. A God who sits high and looks low. A God who travels with you. When you went to that ATM, you don't even realize when you left, somebody got robbed at that ATM. That could have been you. Mm -hmm. When you lost control that time, because you was trying to text and you know you shouldn't have been texting, what you think kept the road straight? That was the law. Huh? When your child could have been in that group that was threatening the schools and went to jail, and you know your child hanging with them, who do you think kept him safe? Man, we just count our blessings and name them one by one. God has done some wonderful things. But I close and encourage you in service this morning to keep on keeping on. Keep on trusting the Lord. He'll make a way. And he'll bring you through. Just remember, if you will, serving the Lord, oh, it's going to pay off after a while. I believe that. Mm -hmm. Serving the Lord, oh, it's going to pay off after a while. Do you believe that? Just keep on working every day. No matter, no matter, no matter, no matter, no matter the price, God said he paid. Because serving the Lord, Oh, it's going to pay off after a while. I normally end that with the Ray Charles, but I ain't going to do the Ray Charles this morning. <laughs> Amen. Brothers and sisters, we joke, we laugh. It's good. We serve a God of humor. But I'm challenging you to know God has more for you. Were you willing to accept it? God has more for you. Don't just settle for any and everything and be comfortable where you are. Move forward in the Lord. And the way you move forward in the Lord is you trust him. You serve him and say, Lord, I'm willing. Send me. Lord, I'm willing. Send me. Bless you, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for time. I went way over time. Please don't tell your pastor. Don't let him know I did that. Amen. And don't, hold, don't get mad with me. Like I said, don't invite me back. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Thank you, brothers and sisters. You, you're clapping for the Lord because I'm just trying to be his instrument. I can't save nobody. I can't help nobody. But what God gives me, I give to you so that we can go home and change our families, change our jobs, change people we know because God wants to save their souls. Amen. Now, I preached this morning and preaching like teaching, is a time, if you will, a proclamation to bring us to a point of knowing what the gospel is. Because it's by the preaching of the gospel that men's souls are saved. I can't say that. But when you know that Jesus, the only begotten son of God, died on the cross for your sins, you may not agree with it, but that was God's method. All you have to do is accept it. He died for the sins of the world. So he died to be our Savior, but he rose to be our Lord. You have to accept him by faith. Is there one today that's missing? Many of the churches I pastor, I couldn't believe how many people in the church that weren't saved because we used to pass on that teacher. You need to know what? You can't tell me. How can you walk according to the precepts or obey his word and you don't have the spirit living inside? Is there one today? Thank you.